Did you have a good look? Yeah. What's gone? What's gone? Daddy gone. Daddy. Laptop. Daddy's laptop's gone. <laughs> Daddy working? No, Daddy's laptop. Daddy's laptop's gone, hasn't he? Laptop's gone. He's got it downstairs. Look. What? Mommy, don't open. The door's open. No, the door's closed. Don't open. Oh. Daddy, bring up. Upstairs. He doesn't need to bring it upstairs yet. Which means that we can have a bigger snuggle. No, Daddy, it's been a Oh, no. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another day with us. I wasn't actually supposed to be vlogging today, but I messed up. Today, I was supposed to put a Tesco up, and um, at 2 o'clock this morning, I thought to myself... Did I actually order that Tesco? I remember doing it. I did it last week. But did I actually place the order? I'd all already transferred the money from my savings account to the account that the Tesco comes out of. And I was thinking, hmm, let's just double check. Click on, please book another slot. Your slot has expired. I hadn't booked the Tesco. And I was thinking, oh, it comes tomorrow morning. That's fine. The only slot that they had available was 7 to 11 p.m. in the night. And I was like, yeah, that's too far to wait for a vlog. So I'm going to pop this one up instead and it's just going to go up in the evening time. I am going to have to pop out today to get something for tea. I think I may have some sausages or something in the freezer. I've just seen a cat here. I did see a cat here because the cat has come up the stairs even though she knows she's not allowed up here. Get down. I don't allow the pets up here. I know some may say that's cruel, but I just don't, uh, I don't know. I don't like the idea of Max going into the back garden, into all the grass that he's pooped and peed on, especially Max anyway, and then coming into the house with his dirty feet and getting upstairs all through my carpets and in my bed. No, I just can't. I don't know what it is. It just... I never used to allow my old dog. Well, tell a lie, I did. My old dog, Sadie, we had her for 15 years. And at first, when we lived in a flat, she did used to come into our bedroom and sleep in our bed with us. And then something horrendous happened. The Somebody in the block had a load of cats. It was disgusting. I mean, cats aren't disgusting, but they had a load of cats and they were covered in fleas which meant that the whole block become infested we have friends who lived in the block of flats as well their dog became infested our dog became infested and obviously she was sleeping in our bedroom we'd not long give birth to Matthew and one night we seen a flea walking on Matthew's head and from that day forward an animal never came near our bedrooms because no we ended up getting a place fumigated anyway we took the dog to the vet for like special flea treatment and ever since that day yeah i've been terrified of fleas and i won't let dogs up in the room no more so um yeah the animals firmly stay downstairs but when she hears me for morning she the cats like pick her owner don't they they like pick their own person although there's loads of us and she loves us all out of all of them, she loves me the most. That sounds very um, positive there. But she does. Like, we could do a video where we all sat and called her and she'd come to me. She's she's my cat. I'm her person. So, of a morning, when she hears me talking and the living room door gets left open, she automatically runs up the stairs to me. But it means that I get hairs on my bed and I don't like her. Nala's not too bad. She's a house cat. So, I don't really mind if she did come up the stairs, but then that's not fair on Max, so I don't allow it. She does come up occasionally and sneaks up here to try and, like, sit on the beds and stuff. But then that means that her hairs that she's molten go everywhere as well. It has been a crazy couple of days here, I tell you. Um, I think we vlogged Saturday, didn't we? And you've all seen that Joe had toothache. Well, um, on Sunday, was it was our 21st anniversary of us being together, 21 years, and Joe had horrendous toothache. So I managed to get an emergency appointment, thought that'd be impossible on a Sunday, but we did. Although it was quite a bit away, it was in Litherland, which is somewhere. I kind of know the area, but I kind of don't. But it was somewhere in Liverpool. Um, 
and he got his his mum's friend Betty to take him up to it anyway because obviously I don't have my car yet so there was no other way of getting there my dad was busy and he rings me from in the middle of Littlelands bear in mind saying that his map was going off at Ted he had no direction to where he was going and he felt like he was having a heart attack so you can only imagine my panic when I'm like, okay, well, can you try and figure out where you are for me so I can get like an ambulance to you or something? And he, I'm saying like, where's Betty? And he's like, I've got out of the car and walked away from her because I felt like I was going to vomit everywhere. So I was like, okay, great. So the only help that you did have is now somewhere else. Fantastic. Okay, drop me a pin. Drop me a pin. I don't know how to do it. So I'm telling him how to do it. I don't know how to do it, Steph. Please just look on your maps and tell me what street you're on. Oh, I don't know what it says. I can't I can't work it out. So oh it was impossible. It was really impossible. I'm storming up and down my house, like, what am I gonna do? Am I just gonna have to like go and get in a taxi and drive around Lizzie looking for this man because he can't direct me to where he is and something's happening to him and he was like, I feel all dizzy. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. And then I heard somebody walking past him and I said, ask that person where the, where the dentist thing is because the dentist was inside a walking centre. So I was like, if you can get there, they can help you. So it turns out he was on the right road and he just had to go right down to the bottom of it. And then I heard Betty. I heard Betty appear behind him and she was like, I found you. she come on foot. She parked a car up and come on foot and found him. She was like, you're impossible. He is. When he gets sick, he is impossible. It turns out anyway he hadn't taken too many tablets this time it sounds ridiculous if you don't know the story back two years ago he had so much tooth pain the dentist said he could double up on the tablet not double up as in take four paracetamol at a time and four ibuprofen at a time but two two ibuprofen two paracetamol at a time until the pain slowed down and then ratio them and he basically took an overdose and he ended up in hospital with liver not failure it was damaged they had to do this drip to reverse it so i was panicking that he'd done the same thing again because he'd slept on the sofa in the night time so not to stay in the bear and then he went straight up to his mum's to paint her kitchen before the dentist appointment and i was thinking is he done that again so i'm saying how many tablets have you taken joe you haven't taken too many he was like no i don't know what it is but my stomach's really hurt and my chest, chest is really tight i feel like i need to vomit i haven't eaten nothing yet i was like you need to go and get food so once i knew where he was i was like directing him to a garage Managed to get into a garage, he got a drink, and instead of buying food, he bought a chocolate bar, and the first bite of it made him vomit. So it's like, that's good, that'll make you feel better. Just keep vomiting, because it's because you've taken all of these tablets on an empty stomach. You just need to, you know, get it all up. So he did, and he said it made him feel a little bit better. Directed him to the walking centre, got into the walking centre. Walking centre was like, there's not much that we can do here for you. You know, you've taken the recommended doses. It's just because of the infection and stuff. Why are you feeling so bad? Get to your dentist. They'll give you antibiotics. Went to the dentist. Dentist gave him three sets of antibiotics. And even though his record states, what happened with the OD? They did not give him strong pain relief when he asked for it. They said they couldn't prescribe it, even though we know that they can. And this is why I go to the dentist with him, because I speak up about these things, but he doesn't. So um, it's so strange, isn't it? Like, I'm quiet on phones and don't speak up for myself, and he does it that side. And then I speak up for him on his nervous point. I is, is just beside me here. She's just doing her learning on her laptop. That don't lean on that pillow. It's wet. And the various spilt milk on it, so we'll wash it. Sorry, I just had to pause a second to help Renee with her learning. We've started a new app and it's it's a bit confusing, isn't it? To say the least. Um, but she's getting it. She's getting it. Um, anyway, Joe got his antibiotics and he is feeling a little bit better. However, the swell swelling is getting bigger and bigger, even though he's got the antibiotics. I think it's while it's just drawing all of the, you know, infection to the front or whatever, ready for it to to pop um and he was going to take the day off work sick yesterday oh, yeah. but i'm not sure if anyone's aware of this but if you use do not disturb mode and somebody rings your phone more than three times it breaks the do not disturb he'd already messaged his manager at four o'clock in the morning saying like i've not been asleep yet can you mark me down as sick tomorrow because i won't be coming in rather than having to wake himself up if he's just fell asleep so he can ring in because i'm not allowed to ring in on his behalf he has to do it himself so that was all sorted he put his phone on do not disturb and his work colleagues started ringing him non-stop from 9 a.m and the same person rang three times which meant it broke the do not disturb and when he went when he went on he was like messages as well from other colleagues asking questions about the job and he was like i'm not in today 
and um, he ends up helping them. So he said, for me to help them through my WhatsApp, I may as well go into work and be paid for it. So he ends up going into work. So um, he didn't end up taking the day off and he didn't end up getting the rest that he needed. So uh, <laughs> he's a workaholic, honestly. And then there's been more news with my car. Oh, honestly. I don't know where to go with it. I have been quite open about how I've felt recently about everything that's gone on with this car. And I've only been open about the way I felt because I've been in a place where I've felt low before because of stupid situations and I've kept it to myself. And I don't ever want to feel like that again. I want to push myself past it, which is why I push myself to go out and I push myself to be like, it's okay, everything will turn out okay. Because the more you think about it and make yourself miserable off it, the more it affects you. And I don't ever want to feel like that again. So I push myself past these feelings and i talk about them to people i talk about them to my family i talk about them on it here openly and the feeling that i've got is like you want to run away that's st stupid isn't it i don't want to run away from my family or my home but the feeling that i've got with this car is like a situation where you'd want to run away from that's the only way i can explain it run away from like the car situation like Wanting to look at it every single day, that's what you mean, right? I don't, I, mm, I don't know, right, so, once upon a time, we lived next door to absolute terrible neighbours, terrible, they blasted music, morning, noon and night, and the only thing I could think of was, you know, it was making me so low and so down that it made me feel like I wanted to run away. And that's exactly what we did. We ran. We moved house as fast as we bloody could. <laughs> and this car situation is making me feel the same way. So if I'm getting the feeling to run away from a car, doesn't that make sense to leave it and not get it? That makes no sense to you. Renee's just like, what? <laughs> An adult might understand what I mean, right? So... We rang up yesterday morning for an update, you know, being the start of next week. And what did they say to us? So we rang up yesterday morning, you know, because it's the start of the week and that's when it should be. And I was getting excited. By the weekend, we'll have a car, we'll go here, we'll go there. You know, planned loads of days out. And he says there's been another delay. He says the 29th. So I'm like, that's not too bad. It's only like two weeks. And he goes, no, the 29th of May. Yeah, the 29th of May. So I froze for a moment while I had to think. And then I was like, why is it taking so long? I'm sorry, but we put this process in four weeks ago. And now you're telling me another six weeks. That's a lot of weeks to wait. And he was like, with all of the bank holidays, it everything took a little bit longer. Our admin team were off. Your car actually didn't get ordered until last week. Hmm. Yeah. And the colour doesn't help. So it's like, well, can I not change the colour? Well, I can see if I can get you a different colour quicker. Well, when will you find that out? In a couple of days. Yeah, so um, I said to him, what about a different car? He said, you want a brand new one? And I said, yeah, he said, that is the process for all of the brand new cars. They're taking three months to ship in. I'm actually getting this faster, which is doing you a favour. So I was left with, okay, call me back then when you find out if you can get me a different colour car. And I put the phone down and I felt like I wanted to run away from the situation. That is the only way I can explain it. So straight away, I started looking to buy cars. I thought a cheap run around has got to be better than this. Let's cancel this. Do the cheap run around for a bit. And then hopefully there won't be such a delay on new cars in a year's time. Or maybe even like get the cheap car until the car's ready and then scrap it for the same value. Not one single car was like when we were looking last time, there was loads of cars for like seven, eight hundred pounds with a couple of months MOT on it. There was not one, not one on the website. There was places that were far away, but as I say, it's getting to them, so it needed to be local. 
And um, I ended up looking at a different dealership who said I can drive away in a car the next day. Today, today it'd be ready by this afternoon. So I was like, okay, we're doing it. I agreed on the phone, on the spot. And they sent me an email to like sign a pre-consensual documentation until I go down there. It is a pre-owned car. It does have a couple of thousand miles. I think I inquired about two. One had 66,000, one had 46,000 miles on it. Um, the only issue is one is a seven-seater that I need to pay £200 to be shipped from Peterborough. And if I don't like it, I don't get the money back. If I do like it, I get the money back. It comes off my bill. The other car is in Liverpool, but it's a five-seater. But he said it's not something that I have to think of that I'm stuck with for five years because after a year, I can sell them it back. I do start fresh, but I will be able to get a better car, possibly even a seven-seater. I won't have no wait time. I won't have a shipping time if as well if there's if it's got to be shipped over because I'm already like a client with them. And um, my repayments would be lower as well. So I was like, that sounds good. Let's go for it. And then I clicked on it and they'd sent me the wrong consensual contract. Honestly, it's like the, it's like the universe's way to tell me that I shouldn't have a car. So I've rang them this morning. The guy who was supposed to send me it is off and the other guy is out of office at the moment. So they're getting it all sorted in a minute. And they're going to ring me back. But yeah, that's, that's where we're at with the car situation. Do I wait it out? Do I wait it out until the 29th of May? He did say it could come before then as well. Do I wait it out for a brand new Dacia Jogger seven-seater, which is big enough for all of our family, I'm paying a similar price for a Dacia Duster five-seater. Second-hand. What do I do? I just, I don't know what to do. Me and Joe sat here last night and he's like, you can have it tomorrow or you can wait. What do you want to do? You want a car now? And I was like, I do want a car now, but I'm happy to wait as well. The thing that's throwing me more is we had a couple of things booked in. So we are going on holiday in a couple of weeks time. We were hoping to drive there. It's not too much of an issue. Sue has now booked an eight seater minibus for us. So, <coughs> bless me. Um, Sue's now booked an eight seater minibus. So we can get, on holiday the only issue is whilst we're away it is sue's birthday and she wants to go eat somewhere in wales which is far away from where we're staying so it means that i'm gonna to have to pay for two taxis each way because obviously we're a large family and we don't fit in one taxi so we're going to it's 200 pounds for the minibus and then it's also taxi fares to where it is which is probably going to be about 40 pounds so um there's 240 pounds in 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 travel already which shouldn't be having to pay um and then we also had gulliver's world booked for the end of may Um, we bought the tickets off joe's sister and we're not going to be able to go to it because i haven't got a car and there's no point to say and we'll still go and we'll get a minibus um but the minibus is like 100 200 pounds like it is to wales because it's a, around the same distance to go on like discounted tickets there's there's no point there's no point paying more than what the full price ticket to cost does that make sense so it's like we could do with a car we could really do with a car for all of these purposes for things that we've got booked in you know joe's dentist is coming up which is miles away as well we're gonna have to try and figure out a way of getting there so it doesn't put him off going there and um I don't know. I just don't know what to do. My brain is baffled. So as you can see, this is what's been going on over the past couple of days. And this is a really, really long intro. And I am so sorry. But um, yeah, I'm vlogging today because I'm going to try and get out of this house. So it's out of my head. Because <laughs> I just can't no more. Stayed in yesterday. Drove myself mad. Had another massive cry. Had another talk about it with Joe last night. Went to bed and could not sleep. So I just need to know what i need to do i honestly don't 
I've just came downstairs. Nevaeh did come down this morning to Joe, who I assumed was working because he took his laptop down last night and I've heard him walking around with so us. He's working. And the poor little sausage is in so much pain and his face is even bigger. So he's actually took the dose today to take it. You took me advice and put your phone on flight mode. Yeah, told him don't use the do not disturb no more. Use the flight mode. Yes, baby? Wow. Who? Look at this one, top and tail and with Dada. Are you comfy? <laughs> that big smile. That big smile is worth it all, isn't it? Hey? Snuggles with Dada. What's going on? <laughs> oh, it's just a pity he has to be sick. Hello, girls. It's all done, so now we can finally head out. And me and the girls have all inten unintentionally, well, you two intentionally matched, didn't you? Yeah. But we all in unintentionally Match the roll wearing oh, pink I'm actually a and black. I'm actually a and the baby's wearing it's more purple, isn't it, than pink, but it's still like a pink. Yeah. They wanted the hair done like Barbie. My She's got like curls with a bear as well. I've actually walked around with us to the chemist to get some more painkillers. And um this little miss would not let him leave when he said bye. He had to walk halfway down with us. I said to him, just leave when you can without nobody noticing. And the first person to notice was Ebony. And she's going, where's dad gone? Where's dad gone? And I'm going to her, Ebony, shh, Ebony, shh. And she see me saying, shush, but then proceeded to keep going, where's dad gone? And then Nevaeh started, wait, wait, daddy's gone, daddy's lost. It's okay, he's gone to the doctor. She's waiting, haven't it? So she's got home because he's really sick. So now she's walking along and every person she walks past, she's going, Daddy's really sick. Daddy's really sick. <laughs> so I've tried to distract her by saying, we're going to get a lollipop, aren't we? Hey? We're going to get a lollipop? Yeah. Yeah. Lollipop. And the girls need the lollipop. Yeah? Now just in Morrison's, we decided on having a homemade kebab for tonight's tea, although it's not going to be slow cooked, it'll have to be oven cooked. Yeah, remember I made it through the weekend, you were like, oh, it's a bit spicy. No, wait, don't worry. I've decided if I don't ever want to cook the salad, I found these noodles, then you'll cook kebab. Yeah, I'm making homemade kebab. You have an idea. Yes. So, we're going to make bracelets when we get home, so we can, like, sell them if we have skin, of course. Leave it in there. And then we're going to do like this pink challenge where we have to get everything um, in the colour pink with our price. I've already got four. And I'm just looking for the lollipop for Nevaeh because she has not gone on about it. Stop going on about it. Um, I tried to enchant her with a cake and she was like, no. I want to make sure it's not on that she can choke on. I don't really like having lollipops. But... Okay, this way. We're going to go this way. Being in that time, he's just put me in an even worse mood. It was absolutely chocker. It starts off not chocker, and then all of a sudden there was an abundance of people everywhere. And it was so busy, people were just walking in front of the baby and cutting her off from us, which was so annoying. The actors, though, she's not there. They can hear me saying, the baby, I come to mummy, and they're just standing away. So, uh, yeah, we're heading home. We've got the bits we needed for tea. Do you like to take that watch out to someone? Oh yeah, the baby said, watch out, because they were in a way. Um, you got the lollipops, didn't you? You got a push pop? And now anyway, we're heading home. Now home, so I'm going to show you what we got. The pitters, a big night in dough and a kebab mix. I literally just mix this with the mints. This isn't the usual way that I do it. I usually use lamb mints, but Morrison's literally had this. Everything else was completely empty. So I'm going to do this. We have done it with just normal mints before and it's turned out all right. I got a lettuce, but Joe's just pointed out to me it is absolutely rotten. Fab. A mayonnaise. And that covers tonight's tea. And then in our little shop, we picked up two packets of these, but Joe took a pack home with them earlier on. We got two of these. How much are those little rabbits, Joe? Two for a pound. Two for a pound. And these are two for 150. Joe got himself some cake, nuts with toothache. But um, yeah, um, two packets of mints actually are gone as well. I don't know if I said that. And these absolute bargains. I've seen these coming home. We walked past the shop and I wasn't going to go in and said, are these Cokes on offer? Because they were all by the till. And when the stuff's by the till, it's usually on offer. One pound a bottle or two for 150. I pay two pounds a bottle <coughs> for this. 
every single day for Joe. So I just got a whole crate, <coughs> £4.50, absolute bargain. And the wipes are what I bought on Amazon, that was another bargain that I've never shown. We got a, four, a 12 pack of Huggies wipes for £4.5p. So uh, get onto Amazon for your boxes of Huggies wipes if you use Huggies. What I do for this is I just mush all of this together as much as I can. I think I've shown it before with the lamb mints. Add this, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion, make it into like a big kebab shape, wrap it in tinfoil and put it in the oven. If I haven't got tinfoil, I literally just put it on a drip rack with a tray underneath and it just keeps the same, just makes it feel a little bit more dry, doesn't it? Um, put it in for about half an hour, 40 minutes half an hour 35 it is actually um check it cut it in the middle make sure that it's you know cooked right through put it in some pitters with some lettuce tomato cucumber and all that which i've already got in the fridge and um yeah that's what i do for today i thought i'd tell you rather than show you because to be able to get this video up tonight i need to end the video now so i can edit it all up i have here edited half of it but i'm gonna edit it up get it uploaded and um what was that which? Renee dropped her plate. Oh no. no, no. Renee dropped a plate. It was only a plastic plate. It's all right. Um, because YouTube sometimes takes ages to upload, especially of an evening time. So I'm going to say see you again soon, probably Thursday for your next video, and it'll be the Tesco. Bye! Little 